All right, we're talking NFL after a week off uh, here on the Orleans Football Network, Orleans Football YouTube channel. We have our top three games of the week, and we're picking three games that we feel are considered one of the better games of the week in the NFL. A lot of good games this week in the NFL and college football, Mark. So uh, kind of hard to, especially in college football. I mean, a ton of good games in college football this week. You know, good opponents going up against each other. So, uh, but the NFL, you got Super Bowl rematch. And speaking about that, over on the Playbook Experts YouTube channel, uh, you broke down the San Francisco Kansas City game uh, with Andy Isco, Jim Feist, and Tony Mejia. So you've got you know four different professional handicappers breaking down the Super Bowl rematch. We'll have a link in the description for that if you want to check that out. So that left me with three other games for us to talk about, including a game in the NFC North between Detroit and Minnesota. Matter of fact, we have three teams from the NFC North to talk about here in our first couple of games. But uh, who would have thought after the awful offseason that Minnesota had that they'd be sitting here after the bye, undefeated, taking on the defending North champs, the Detroit Lions, and being favored by two points. Yeah, really, it's unbelievable. I'm still a little bit surprised that they are favored at this stage because Detroit really hasn't done anything wrong here, Greg. But we all know what Minnesota's done this season here. They're one of two undefeated teams. They're coming back from London, playing some really, really good football. And a lot of that is because of what Sam Darnold has done. Sam Darnold, right now as we speak, the comeback player of the year in the National Football League. All right, so let's talk about this game. And one of the things I want to talk about is the fact that Minnesota uh, is now in a different spot Uh, because they had the upset win over San Francisco at home. They had the upset win over Houston at home. But now they're the favorite. They're a two-point favorite in this spot, and they're 8-19 and 19 against the spread in the last 27 as a home favorite. Uh, of course, they're off to a great start. They haven't dropped a cover. They've won every game. They've covered every game. But they're also off a of bye. So they're off a of bye. So, you know, some of that momentum just should stop a little bit, and they're not really as good in this situation, as I just mentioned, as a road favorite. Excuse me, as a home favorite. And on the flip side, Boy, Dan Campbell and the Lions are really good in this spot. Uh, if you look at it, Dan Campbell is 13-7 and seven against the spread as a road dog. He is 6-0 and oh against the spread all time when he takes on a team that is either 500 or more uh, in the division. Um, and uh, also 9-1 and one against the spread uh, if, uh, if he's basically off of a straight-up double-digit spread win and he's one or no in that spot this year that was last week's win 27 8 and 1 wow. overall when they take on teams with a 500 or better winning percentage three and one in that spot so this is just huge numbers for dan campbell and detroit that i think work in their favor and i also look they they got pride they're the defending champs and we're the underdog so I don't I don't really care too much about the home field in these spots. I just think it's about who's the better team. And I just still think that Detroit's the better team. And I think that uh, they're going to try to go out there and prove it. Well, uh, I agree with you, Craig. And I say you can shorten up all those numbers real quickly. All you need to do is identify a couple of stats. Number one, yeah. <laughs> uh, Detroit uh, has won the money seven times in a row in the series. Uh, and they're the better Detroit football team now than yeah. they've been in those other seven games. Uh, they're also six and one in their last seven division road games, playing really, really well. And uh, the other side that I really like, what jumps out to me, is Sam Darnold in his career as a National Football League starting quarterback in division games. He's only seven and fourteen straight up and against the spread, and just one and five when he's been favored in a division game. I think the wrong team's favorite here, Greg. I like Detroit plus the points. Yeah, and by the way, speaking of that run Detroit's on against Minnesota, the last three games. 3-0 straight up ATS by six or more points. We know that Hutchinson is not playing. We get that. But that's something that's, I think, going to be an, an effect, a negative effect maybe as the season goes on in totality. But in one week, in one game, maybe there's even a little bit of a motivation for it that we're going to go out there and show everybody that, you know, we're going to rally around Hutchinson's law. So if anything, in just one game right after it happened, it could work in their favor. So. You know, we talk about the old uh, rally around the starting quarterback uh, issue, which works really, really, rather well. You bring up a backup to replace a starting quarterback the first game, the team rallies around him. 
Well, they've lost their defensive stud, and he is a stud, Hutchinson. You may have the same similar situation on the defensive side of this football game as well. Okay. Let's talk about the second team uh, or the or the other team, actually, out of the NFC North that's playing this week as far as one of our top three games, and that's Green Bay hosting Houston. They're a two-and-a-half-point favorite in this one. First time, by the way, Houston's in a dog roll, similar to Detroit. It's the first time they're in a dog roll this year. But Houston's good in this role. They're 9-5-1. and one. ATS is a road dog over the last six, over the last 15 times they've been in that spot. They're 5-1 and one on the season. But taking a closer look, they're only 2-3-1 and one against the spread. And I think that matters because what it's saying is, is, well, they're they're expected to be doing something and they're just not fulfilling that expectation. Um, and remember, they went to Minnesota and they did it with Collins, Nico Collins, who was off to a tremendous start, a wide receiver, and they still lost. This is an NFC team, Green Bay. They're back on the road against them. And Green Bay is supposed to be just as good, if not better than Minnesota. And no Nico Collins. He's not yep. playing. That's a big loss. And Green Bay now has got Jordan Love back getting in a little bit of a groove now. He needed a little bit of time to get back on his feet. We saw that last week against Arizona. And that's why I like the Packers in this one. This is just all about, again, just for me, similar to Detroit. It's really – Detroit, though, has a lot more of the trends that also just made it more of a, oh, I really like that. This one, to me, was just more of – you know what? I just think Green Bay might. I just think they're a better team, especially without Nico Collins. I just that's a big loss for Houston, and I and I kind of think Houston's also due for another loss. And I think Green Bay is starting to get on a roll. Well, Green Bay is on a roll. It's good they have Jordan Love back at the quarterback position because they desperately need him. Uh, the other quarterback uh, we're talking about, C.J. Stroud, is a story all into himself. He's really, really taken the National Football League by storm. He's been outstanding in his career as an underdog when he's taken on an opponent that has a sub-700 win percentage. Seven times he's been in that role, he's won the money six times, six out of seven times. But what jumps out to me in this game, most of all, Greg, is the Houston Texans are the one and only team in the National Football League playing this weekend that rank in the top ten both offensively and defensively. So they do things. They check both boxes coming into this football game from an offensive and defensive perspective. Give me the Houston Texans in this game. Yeah, that would and that would be a really big win for Houston if they can beat the Packers in the situation where the Packers seem to be right now. And without Nico Collins, I think that's good. That would prove to everybody that Houston is a legitimate Super Bowl contender and not just maybe a team that can go that next step in year two with the regime. Uh, because I'm not expecting that, especially the other team. I'm expecting to get that far. As I, as I said, um, I have Detroit and Green Bay playing uh, in the championship game, and I still uh, believe that's the case. So um, I'm sticking with the Packers. You're going to go ahead and take the Texans in this spot, and I'm going to move on to the third one. And this is going to be the Seattle Seahawks and the Atlanta Falcons. By the way, if you want to check out, like I said, the San Francisco Kansas City breakdown, you can uh, link in the description for the playbook. Uh, expert YouTube channel. We broke that one down on that show. But let's talk about this one where Seattle has dropped three straight after a 3-0 and start to the season. Atlanta, meanwhile, 4-2 and overall. Uh, they've won four of the last five. But Atlanta's not been good in this spot, very similar to Minnesota. They're 6-15 and as a home favorite against the spread, last 21. 1-2 and in that spot this year. And keep in mind, they were almost 0-3, except they came back tied the game late against Tampa Bay, won the game in overtime. So this is just not where Atlanta seems to be feeling comfortable. And Raheem Morris's career uh, numbers are still not very good in some of these spots. 3-8 and eight at home off a straight-up win, 2-13 and 13 against the spread versus an opponent off a double-digit against the spread loss, 5-14 and 14 against the spread when you take on a team that's 500 or more. And I also just like the fact that Seattle is going to be coming into this game with a lot of motivation to stop the slide. I mean, I still think this is a good football team. So I, I don't look at this team as just a bad team that now is just going to, well, they're just not good. That's why they've lost three straight. They've come back to earth. I don't think that's the case. I think it's a good football team. They're 14-3 and three against the spread versus a 500 or better NFC opponent, non-division. Um, in this spot. So that's also another one to like. I, I am a little bit concerned with the one, four and one spread record. That definitely is not something that uh, I like here. 
But I think this is a pretty even matchup of teams that I think are pretty evenly matched overall. But I just think Seattle is a little bit more desperate. I don't like Atlanta as a home favorite. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and take Seattle. I'm going to be on their side of the game with you, Greg, here in this contest here as well. Uh, I think Seattle is a bit of a phony baloney. Uh, reason being that uh, in a league where the running game has really come to, f- uh, to the forefront, Seattle ranks dead last in the league in rush attempts per game. That's one of the key vital stats in handicapping National Football League games is if you can control the ball by running the ball and eating up clock time, you end up benefiting with it because your quarterback has a much better chance to succeed. When you're dead last in rush attempts per game, all you're doing is bringing your punter out probably two, three, four times more than he should be coming out on the football playing field. And it's not fair to Geno Smith either. I mean, you're asking him to do things that, you know, he's not that elite of a quarterback. He needs a running game. Yeah, exactly right. So you're putting you know added pressure on him in that sense. The other side of the coin is this: uh, the Seattle starts out this football season here three and zero. Then they lose their next three football games, so they're three and three after six games. Teams in the National Football League who did just that a three zero start, then zero three afterwards, they're just seven and twelve against the spread in game seven. That's the role for Seattle. So they have to find themselves to get uh, dig themselves out of this hole, which history says they're going to have a hard time doing. And what are they going to have to do? They're going to have to do it on the East Coast in an East Coast one o'clock body start clock or one o'clock start here. I think it's all up against Seattle in this football game here. Give me Atlanta and I'll play the Falcons in this game. And the other thing, too, is, um, you know, you've got a college coordinator that he's got to start again. Like you said, there's got to be some balance because he came from Washington. And, of course, we know Washington last year, they did a lot of throwing the football. Yes. And they've got to figure – now, look, there are a couple of injuries in the offensive line. That's definitely played into it. So we've got to get some of those guys back uh, before you can say Seattle's offensive line and their, their offense is completely set. So there's an issue there. And keep this in mind, too. Atlanta is, is, is not very good at rush defense. Now, you've got to take advantage of that, though. And if Seattle just continues to not run the football against a team that can't stop the run, well, then they deserve to lose. So they better go. If I'm the head coach, McDonald, the rookie coach, I'm going into that offensive root meeting and I'm saying, I want to run the football this week. They can't stop the run. We got to run the football. So we'll see. Well, if they the, do. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I would say we'll see if they do, though. You know. Well, you know, this kind of a little sidebar note here, it really, truly, in truth, has nothing to do with the handicap. But a good friend of mine uh, used to uh, bet football games and didn't put a whole lot of work into his handicapping. <laughs> and whenever he had a matchup of two teams whose nicknames were birds, like the Falcons and the Seahawks here, he would bet the dog because he was betting the bird dog <laughs> in those football okay. games. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, but, he must have done well with No, that. he didn't do well. No, oh, he didn't. Okay. <laughs> no. All right. All right, right. so that's going to wrap it up here for our three games of the week in NFL here on the Arledge Football Network, Arledge Football YouTube channel. We've got a bunch of other videos that uh, I'll be spitting out there between now and Saturday's games and Sunday's games. You can look at all the other videos that we have out there uh, for the games, including we already have upsets uh, Friday night, uh, games of the week in college. uh, And uh, you can also go to the Playbook Experts YouTube channel for uh, 90 minutes of handicapping talk. Even a little baseball talk, uh, nice. baseball playoff talk on the show. Uh, so check that out. And uh, check out the links in the description because you'll check out Playbook Sports YouTube, the Playbook Sports uh, website. Uh, you can check out Mark's packages uh, if you want to go down that road. You can also get the newsletter link if you want to take a look at uh, the best handicapping newsletter in the business. So uh, we'll talk more, though, with Mark next week. And uh, Mark uh, – uh, I know things have been a little rough for you with the hurricane and, and, and working overtime with the newsletter, uh, but it's all worth it. It's all worth it, Greg. It's uh, the price you pay when uh, hurricanes come knocking at your door. You had it worse than we did, though, bud. I mean, it hit you directly. I'm only paying the price from a, a, an Internet uh, and power outage standpoint from uh, some of our uh, our. Did employees. you get the website back? Yes, our website is back. Knock on wood. Thank you. But it's the employees that do that work yeah. with our newsletter who live in the Asheville area that we're paying the price for. But nonetheless, everybody's healthy and we're back up or operating just a little bit slow getting the ball rolling. Mark, appreciate it as always. Uh, looking forward to talking week nine in college football and week eight in the NFL on next week's show. 
Hey, my pleasure as always, Greg. Be well and good luck this week.